and welcome to GameSec. Did it? No, this isn't right. Hold on. Hello and welcome to GameSec. Yes, Shenmue 3 is finally here. It's available to play and yes, it is real. I've been waiting 17 years for this. In fact, there's been more time since Shenmue 2's and 3's release date than there was between Shenmue 1 and the late 80s when the series takes place. I am a huge Shenmue fan. I've played through parts 1 and 2 many, many times each. They're some of my favorite games ever. And thanks to a Kickstarter campaign that raised over $6 million, Shenmue 3 was finally able to enter development. So, does it live up? Is it worth your time? Well, that's what I'm here to tell you. Also, I'm wearing a Shenmue 3 shirt, so that totally qualifies me to review the game. Let's go. Shenmue 3 is finally here. Will you look at that? That's just amazing. This game is available on Windows and the PlayStation 4. As a console gamer, it should come as absolutely no surprise that I'm playing the PS4 version. It is worth mentioning that for the PC version, they abruptly switched from Steam to the Epic Game Store, likely because a large amount of money was involved. People didn't like that at all, and I can definitely understand that. But it didn't affect me as a console gamer, thankfully, so this is the version I'm talking about. It's also worth mentioning that I completely avoided any and all things about this game leading up to its release. I muted the word Shenmue and the like everywhere I could on social media. I didn't look at the art or watch trailers or play demos. As a huge Shenmue fan, I wanted to go into this fresh. Anyway, the game begins mere seconds after Shenmue 2 ends. You now tag around with Shen Hua, who was the girl you tagged around with on disc four of Shenmue 2. She has since changed her clothes. You, however, have not. Nor should you ever, despite being able to do so later in the game. You're Ryo Hazuki. You're meant to wear a white shirt and a leather jacket and blue jeans and nothing else. Gone is any of the supernatural stuff they seem to be building up to at the end of Shenmue 2. You spend the first half of the game or so in Bailu Village, which is where you were on your way to in Disc 4 of Shenmue 2. But you never got to see it then. The village is actually pretty big with lots of paths that veer off into other areas. There are lots of people to talk to and of course things to buy and sell. One thing that this village has in abundance are women who are older than you who really, really wanna, well, how shall we say, jump your bones. Hey. What is it, handsome? I'm looking for a shop that sells stained buns. If you're hungry, why didn't you say so? Come over to my place and I'll feed you until you're full. Actually, I... I mean, come on, Ryo, you're not exactly going steady with anyone. No, no. The gameplay is mostly classic Shenmue, asking people where this person or that location is, then working your way there. Once you get there, you find out you need to go find someone or something else. In fact, this game suffers from the just one more thing syndrome, if there is such a thing. Have you ever talked to someone in real life who just keeps going right when you think the conversation is done? Well, this game is kind of similar. Just when you think you've accomplished a goal, the game throws just one more thing before that goal is actually achieved and you can move on. Sure, Shenmue 1 and 2 did this a lot as well, but part three here really takes it to a whole new level. As a result, it feels like the game is very slow to start, but it eventually does pick up a bit. Like the previous games, you need to make sure to sleep at night. But new to this one are the eating mechanics. That's right, you've gotta eat. Your energy is constantly draining over time, and if it gets too low, you can't even run. It'll never drain completely empty on its own, though. To counter this, you need to buy lots of food to restore your HP. Certain foods will restore more HP, so make sure to get the most bang for your buck because earning money in this game isn't easy. That's right, you have jobs here, too. At first, all you can really do is chop wood. This is fun and easy. Oops. Mm-hmm. Oops. I like how music from Afterburner plays when you really start to do well. Good. Yes. Mm -hmm. However, you can only make maybe $70 if you do amazingly well. Just about every activity in the game has a timer that you can see in the upper right of the screen as it winds down. Eventually, there are other jobs, the best of which is the forklift driving. This isn't an all-day affair like it was in Shenmue 1, and the route is super short, but you can easily make 320 bucks per stint. The 
there's also gambling and games that you can play. Like turtle racing! Yeah! Super fun! The good news is that Lucky Hit is back. The physics here feel very different than Lucky Hit from Shenmue 2, but it's still quite good. But it's a lot harder to do well this time around because there are fewer winnable slots at the bottom. Quick time events are back and you've got to be really fast. Fortunately, you're able to redo them right away if you fail, so even if you're a slow old person, you should be totally fine. There is also a leveling up aspect to this game. The previous entries kind of had something similar where you could level up your moves, but this goes way beyond that. Each new move that you get should be mastered by sparring with someone. This is generally pretty easy. Once a move is mastered, your attack level goes up. You can also do simple yet very repetitive exercises with practice dummies. These take absolutely forever, but will level up your endurance, giving you a longer life bar. And you absolutely want the longer life bar, especially since it's always draining. Both of these traits level up your overall kung fu level, which will help you beat enemies. If you want to waste your time, there are games you can play. These range from very simple whack-a-mole type things to this weird new car game where you try to outrun the police. There are plenty of other new games to play as well. Even the QTE games make a reappearance. Sadly, there are no actual Sega arcade games in here. I don't know why, I mean there's Space Harrier posters all over the place. And Excite QTE has Sega labeled all over it. And they even tease us with Virtua Fighter! The closest thing to an actual video game is this weird egg duck Virtua Fighter thing, which only consists of one match per machine. What really sucks though, is that there's no darts game. I mean, I'm glad that Lucky Hit is back, but no darts? That was one of my favorites from the first two games. Ah well, at least there are several ways to waste your time if you want. Okay, so we've talked about most of the basics of Shenmue 3. However, in 2000, Shenmue's graphics were sure a sight to behold and every character was voiced. Does Shenmue 3 blow you away in a similar fashion? Also, how are the controls, the story, and the pacing? Will it keep you glued to the TV or does it just drag on and on? Well, let's check out the rest of Shenmue 3. Whoa. Where the hell did this go? Oh yeah, I already put it in there at the beginning of the episode. God, I'm an idiot. How did this get back over here? Oh well. In the first two games, you moved with the D-pad and ran by pressing the R-trigger. Here, the controls have been changed. You can no longer move with the D-pad at all, but the R-trigger still makes you run. You steer with the left analog stick and can change the camera with the right analog stick, which can change the direction if you're running. Basically like a third-person shooter, it feels pretty natural. The fighting has been completely changed around. Again, you can no longer use the D-pad, which as you can imagine, isn't a good way to play a fighting game. Here though, you barely need it as there are no Street Fighter style special moves to pull off. The analog stick basically just aims you and the right stick will select your foe if you're fighting more than one at a time. You basically just have button sequences that you need to remember. You can assign these to the R2 button and pull them off with just a press and select between them with the L1 and R1 buttons. L2 blocks. I recommend stepping away from your opponent if you're not attacking. Once you get used to it, it's pretty easy to win fights. There are a couple of bosses in the game where even if you deplete their life bar, you lose. You're actually supposed to lose these fights. That's because the story wants you to find a super magic way to beat them even though you clearly have no problem winning, but whatever. <laughs> What was that? Okay, I think I can recall some things now. <laughs> Speaking of the story, this part is kind of disappointing. Most of the game is spent worrying about Shen Hua's missing father. Barely any attention at all is given to Ryo's story of avenging his father. In fact, there's really not much story going on here at all. There really aren't any big reveals here, in fact most of it we already know. Shen Hua herself is completely useless except for one single point in the game. The previous game really built her up like maybe she has some sort of special abilities and perhaps she probably does but they're barely utilized here. Still, when the story parts do actually happen, it's pretty awesome. They really padded this game out to make it as long as they could. That's why this game suffers from the just one more thing syndrome that I mentioned earlier. It often feels like I'm not getting anywhere in the game. 
In fact, I figured that this game was so low budget compared to the first one that the entire game was gonna take place in Bailu Village and just drag on and on. What was that? Thankfully, that's not the case, and eventually you get to the Chinese city of Niawu. This place is pretty big, and it makes me feel as if I'm wandering around Wan Chai from Shenmue 2. It's probably not as big as Wan Chai, but it's close. Maybe it feels that way because there are so many stairs here. So many stairs. These are here to slow your progress a bit so that the game can load, at least I imagine. The inventory management has been completely overhauled. It's pretty simple once you get used to it, but there is one downfall. If you buy an absolutely delicious cola from a vending machine, you no longer get to watch Ryo enjoying the refreshing beverage. All that happens when you use the drink is that you get some hit points back. Boring. As I said before, earning money can take a while and there are a couple of very expensive items that you'll need to buy. I feel that the prices are probably so high in order to pad the length of the game. That way you spend more time working to get that money. When this happens, the game really pushes you to visit a fortune teller so that you can win big at gambling. Bet on the number you get and you're bound to win. Yeah, there's just one huge problem with that. In order to gamble, you need to buy tokens. Then you gamble with the tokens instead of money. Then you need to take the tokens that you win to the prize exchange to exchange them for a small selection of different prizes. Then you need to take those prizes to a pawn shop to sell them for money. This is needlessly complicated. Honestly, the forklift is the fastest way to earn money. Still, as long as you're not an impatient gamer, this is a very peaceful, if sometimes repetitive game. Dried herbs and nothing else. This design. Shenmue 3 runs on the Unreal 4 engine, which absolutely sucks compared to the Unreal 7 engine. I say that for the benefit of you watching from the future trying to brush up on the series right before Shenmue 4 comes out in 2037. Anyway, I've got to say, this game looks gorgeous. Maybe that's just me being used to the original graphics from the year 2000, but this just trounces them. Of course, you'd expect that. There is a ton of rich color here and detailed objects are everywhere. They did pretty well for having a budget that was actually lower than the original game. At first I thought Ryo looked kind of weird, and well, maybe he does. I think his eyes are perhaps a bit too close together compared to the original model. Other than that though, he looks like Ryo and he's fine. His clothes look way better now, obviously. Some of the oddities of the original games are still present here though. People will often suddenly fade in from non-existence, especially once you get to Niawu. There's also a lot fewer people wandering around compared to the first two games, and some of the ones that are you can't even talk to. Oh, and sometimes the camera will snap to a new position for no reason several times during a conversation and it feels weird. The draw distance is very good, however, the detail distance is not. You'll see things like foliage and other details drawing in as you approach. This problem is exacerbated once you get to Niawu. Sadly, the frame rate isn't locked at all. In Bailu Village, it often runs at 60 frames per second, but drops a bit when there's too much going on. Usually the frame rate is pretty good here though. Once again, since Nyawu is much more complex, the frame rate takes a pretty big hit here. It rarely runs at 60. I found that if you're running on a PlayStation 4 Pro, if you turn off the super sampling and turn boost mode on, it can help a bit. At least I think it does? It still drops plenty of frames though. Still, the takeaway is that this game is pretty good looking all around despite having rather simple geometry in a lot of its polygon models. The music is absolutely awesome and I'd expect nothing less. A lot of it is from Shenmue 1 or 2 and there's lots of new stuff here as well. Even some stuff that was originally composed for the first two games but never used is in use here. However, the music doesn't loop properly, so there's a big old gap of silence before any given track restarts. Sometimes the music even forgets to play and you're just running around listening to only the environmental sound effects in your footsteps. I assume this is a bug that will be fixed in the future long after everyone's already beaten the game. At least I hope it will be fixed. Everything is voiced and I'm happy to report there's still a lot of that trademark stilted dialogue. 
You know, it's rude to turn down a lady. But you're good looking, so I'll let you off the hook today. Uh, hi. But it seems like they got much better voice actors for the majority of the NPCs. Hi there. I've heard about you. You're Shenhua's friend, aren't you? Sadly, a lot of the returning characters have been recast, but not all of them. For example, you can call some of the old characters from the first two games on the phone and they sound nothing like they used to. China? Why so far from home? Yeah, that is not Tom. One thing that's very, very, very annoying is that you can't skip through the dialogue. I can read a lot faster than I can listen, and sometimes I just don't want to hear the same old thing again and again. What's weird though is that sometimes you can skip the dialogue, but only with certain characters, and if you load a save, you can't skip through them anymore. Maybe this is another bug? I'm glad I beat the game before they fixed it. Actually, I'm not. All in all, it probably took me around 20 hours or so to beat the game, which feels longer than either of the first two games. I'm only guessing here is there's no playtime counter on the game's save files that I know of. Still, this game is longer than the first two with less substance, and it seems like there might be some DLC in the future. I hate that, but yeah, I'll buy it, I can't resist. So is this game worth playing through? Hell yeah it is, at least for me. But let's be real here, this isn't as good as either Shenmue 1 or 2. As a result, I'm kind of disappointed. We waited so long for this. Yes, I'm happy that I'm playing it, it's a great game, but I want more story. Aside from that, it's still very, very much Shenmue. With the first two games, I started replaying them immediately once I beat them, just because I missed playing them. So will I play through Shenmue 3 again? Well, yes, I already am. <sighs> exactly are these people? So that's my take on Shenmue 3. I feel that this game expects you to be very familiar with the first two games before starting this one. However, if you're not, there is a digest movie that you can watch from the title screen to help catch you up to speed. Also, this is a great excuse to take your time and play through Shenmue 1 and 2 HD, which is readily available on any platform that you can get Shenmue 3 on. When it comes down to it, Shenmue 3 just didn't do as much for me as the first two games did, but I still found it very endearing and totally worth my time. I recommend it if you like to play through relaxing games, and yes, I am glad it exists. I just hope that Shenmue 4 focuses more on the story if it's ever going to be made. Anyway, what do you guys think of Shenmue 3? Let me know. In the meantime, thank you for watching GameSack. I believe I may have had too many Jet Colas. Perhaps this would be a good time to relieve myself. Oops. That's it. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Yes. Ah. Oh. 